Hi, this is Misha, and this is just a very brief general overview video of the so-called Century Series of American fighters. These were all created in the 1950s at various points. And uh, many were very forward-looking, technologically speaking. And many were also very short-lived, frankly. And most had pretty major design flaws, to be honest with you. But again, it was kind of that era of rapid modernization. I've already done a video looking at the MiGs and the Sukhois from Russia. And just did one on the F-84 and F-86. The Republic F-84 and the North American F-86. To that end, on the far left, we have the North American F-100 Super Sabre. As you might guess, this is a follow-on to the F-86 Sabre. To that end, it's primarily geared towards being a fighter. However, it was also considered a fighter-bomber. Next, we have the McDonnell Douglas F101 F101 Voodoo. This one has an interesting place in history. It actually gone it went through many changes in what it was going to be. Originally it was supposed to be a, a bomber escort or as the Air Force coined it a penetration fighter. And later, it was reworked into a tactical nuclear fighter. And then after that, it was reworked to be a reconnaissance and essentially interdictor craft. It has a very interesting missile system, too. Moving on, we have probably the most unique looking... This is the Convair F-102 Delta Dagger. This is another interesting plane. They went through a few different revisions, but essentially it was an interceptor with a large bay of missiles it meant to just open up and let loose on a fleet of bombers. And then on from there, we have the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter. This was a true high-performance, lightweight fighter. It was pressed into a bomber roll a few times, but that's not what it was there for. It was essentially an interceptor, a fighter, a hot rod. And then finally, we have maybe the fam most famous on the table. This is the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief. Now, the one I am missing is the F-106, which was the Delta Dart, which was a much advanced version of the F-102 Delta Dagger. So, apologies for not having that. I do my best to be complete for you folks, but I think this is pretty good. But this should make for an interesting series to get into. These are important fighters. 
That's for sure. I mean, they were steps ahead. Again, all of these flew. For example, the um, the 100, the Super Saber, first flew in 53 and was in service late the following year. The Voodoo was a short time later. The Delta Dagger had a very protracted development cycle with issues that really never were fully resolved, hence the F-106. The Starfighter was actually an internal project from Lockheed. And it was really designed by Kelly Johnson in response to what pilots said they wanted after experiences in Vietnam. Problem was the Air Force didn't really seem to want it. But at first they seemed excited. And, uh... Yeah, the Thunder Chief. This has the dubious distinction of the only aircraft pulled from service in Vietnam because of losses. Which is a little unfair because it was really doing something it was never designed to do. In some areas it was a very high performance craft. In others it was not. At the time it was built and put into service it was the largest single seat, single engine fighter in the world. And even today it's still a very big plane. Many of these were nuclear capable. The Super Saver was nicknamed the Hun. I'm not really aware of any nicknames for the Voodoo. Sorry. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting craft in the sense that if you notice the rear section, the two engines and the tail, if it looks like McDonnell Douglas's later F-4 Phantom. That's not a coincidence. This is the two-seat version, by the way. The 102 was nicknamed the Deuce. A little easier to say than Delta Dagger. Very interesting design. The 104 is kind of one of those love it or hate it type craft. Has a very colorful history. It did see a lot of foreign service, just not a real extensive American service because the Air Force just didn't really have a, a, a role for it. And the 105 is most famously known as the Thud, or the Lead Sled, if you will. All of these were put into mass production, but they were produced in the 1,000 to 2,000 pieces range, so not huge numbers like the F-84 or F-86 before them, or the later F-4 after them. In fact, the F-4 would end up replacing a number of these. These are all also Air Force planes. Many would also have reconnaissance variants. But yeah, just a, a brief overview of the Century series. All the models on the table, as usual, are 172 scale die cast from Hobby Master. They have the usual features like moving canopy, removable pilot, or pilots, optional ordnance, and optional gear up or down. In the case of the Voodoo, its uh, weapons bay actually does rotate, which is pretty cool. And 
in the case of the hood, it actually does have the ability to have the engine displayed with it fully, you know, open like a pedal or closed. And the F100 Super Saber has the feature of really frustrating me getting the ordinance to peg in. It was really weird. I never really succeeded. Um, I'm not sure why they weren't fitting properly. I had to look at it later. It did come with quite a few ordnance loads, though, so that's nice. But yeah, look, I hope you check out the individual videos as I put them up over the next week or two. Any questions or comments, welcome on below as always. And if you could, like, share, and subscribe. Well, this is Misha. It's been a long day. I just wanted to do a little quick one here. I'll catch you very soon with more details next time.